Welcome. Welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock, your host. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. Oh, man. I'm excited about today's show. Uh, I'm as excited about today's show as I was last week when I told you all about uh, Charleston White, that we were going to address the Charleston White deal, and I was telling you all that today's show will be important. Uh, I was saying this last week. I believe this show is important, and I kind of previewed a little bit of it yesterday. As as we talked yesterday, I, I was telling you about what's going on uh, with men, particularly black men, and the culture, and I ended yesterday's show telling you all, talking about Patrick Mahomes and this whole victim mentality and how the culture requires a line of thinking that actually hurts and damages black men. And I told you all yesterday we're going to follow up by talking about Jawan Howard. That's what we're going to do today. It's going to be me and you. Uh, we'll tack on at the end. Uh, we'll be joined by a friend of the show, Ken Maurer, longtime NBA referee. You guys remember Ken. He got run out of the NBA uh, for not taking uh, the experimental uh, medical trial disguised as a vaccine uh, during the COVID deal. Uh, Ken's going to be back to update us on what's going on with him and his dispute with the NBA and how we can help Ken in his dispute with the NBA. We'll, we'll have that at the end of the show. Uh, but a very important show today why, why I try to unpack and explain to you all uh, what the culture is requiring of us and how it's actually damaging us. And I'll do that through by talking about Juwan Howard. Now, I'll give you, as we move into basketball season, uh, I'll give you a little daily dose of LeBron James as we, you know, move into December and January and February. Uh, we're out of the college football season. And it's time for me to, <laughs> again, start analyzing LeBron James as I'd like to do. Uh, we'll do that today as, as well as I talk about uh, what's going on with Jawan Howard. Before I do anything, though, I need you guys listening over Apple. Hit that five-star rating. It's important as we fight the algorithm. Uh, write a review of the show over Apple. It's important as we fight the algorithm. Uh, as you're, if you're watching over YouTube, hit the likes. Hit the subscribe, hit the notifications, help us fight the algorithm. You know, we've gone through uh, some headwind here in recent months as we have gone deeper and deeper into topics that uh, we're not supposed to talk about. I'm not going to say other uh, media outlets and platforms don't talk about it, but, you know, in the corporate space, they don't. And there's some YouTubers and some people out here in the independent media space that talk about things that we talk about, but we go at some pretty tough topics. And <clears throat> YouTube and the algorithms and Google don't like us, and the only uh, recourse we have is for you all to do simple things like hit that five-star rating on Apple, hit the likes on these YouTube, tell your friends to come join us and participate in our conversation. As we give you a different way uh, to look at the world, a, in my view, a better way at looking at the world and analyzing what's going on in the culture. Uh, so before I get to my fire starter today, which is gonna be blazing hot, I wanna talk to you guys about one of our great sponsors. You guys know, about a year ago, I switched and got my Patriot Mobile phone. I'm so pleased with it for more than 10 years. Patriot Mobile has been America's only Christian conservative wireless provider standing behind their values and their exceptional service. They are an example of putting the cause ahead of profits, and it's why I'm proud to partner with them. Starting today, Patriot Mobile is extending their Black Friday deal to every Friday Matters deal, and you can get a free smartphone when you switch today. Patriot Mobile offers dependable nationwide coverage, giving you access to all three major networks, which means you get the same coverage you've been accustomed to without funding the left. When you switch to Patriot Mobile, you're supporting free speech, religious freedom, the sanctity of life, our veterans and first responders, and more. Their 100% U.S.-based customer service team makes switching easy. Keep your number, keep your existing phone, or for a limited time, get a free smartphone from Patriot Mobile. All you have to do is go to patriotmobile.com Jason or call 972-PATRIOT 
and use the promo code FRIDAY76. Again, a free smartphone with the promo code FRIDAY76. This is a limited time offer. Join me, make the switch today, patreonmobile.com slash Jason. That's patreonmobile.com slash Jason or call 972-PATRIOT. Guys, I know it's like, oh, it's a little bit of a hassle switching phone providers. I did it. I'm not asking you to do anything that I haven't done. That's one thing you can say about these uh, sponsors that I talk about and we endorse on this show. I back it up. I'm not going to ask you to do something I'm not willing to do. And if we're really going to fight, if we're really going to fight against the left, you got to get a little bit uncomfortable and do some things that are a tiny, just a tiny bit difficult. Think about what our ancestors did so that we could all be fat, lazy, and happy here in America. And you don't want to switch cell phone providers? You don't want to give your money to Patriot Mobile? People died for you to be free. And all I'm asking you to do is spend your money with Patriot Mobile. It's easy. All right. Uh, so let's get into this fire starter. And I don't know how long it's going to take me to unpack, uh, but there's a lot of things I, I want to get to here in this fire starter. There's a lot of video I want to play you of Jawan Howard. So uh, buckle up, sit back, uh, prepare to be entertained, prepare to have your thoughts challenged. Uh, let's get to it. Black Lives Matter. They destroyed Jawan Howard, the Michigan basketball coach. The movement loosed a poisonous and volatile racial animus and victim mentality with, within one of the best young athletes I ever covered as a sports writer. I met Juwan in the fall of 1992. He was a sophomore basketball player at the University of Michigan. I was a 25-year-old journalist given my first big assignment. The Ann Arbor News hired me to cover Michigan's infamous Fab Five team. Chris Webber was the best player on that squad. Jalen Rose had the biggest personality. Juwan Howard was the team's emotional leader. The Rock, teammates and coaches counted on as the steadying influence. Webber and Rose reached greater heights than Howard in the NBA, but they could not match Howard's longevity. He played 19 seasons in the association and earned $151 million. When his career finished in 2012, his on-court reputation was impeccable. The Miami Heat welcomed him into their organization as an assistant coach. In 2019, when his alma mater named him head coach of the Wolverines, no one who followed Howard's career would predict that his lack of emotional control and anger towards white men would potentially wreck his coaching career. But that's where we are today. Dewan Howard is under investigation once again as the University of Michigan sorts through his latest angry meltdown. This time, there is no film footage. According to reports, on Friday, Howard engaged in a nasty confrontation with longtime Michigan strength and conditioning coach John Sanderson. The initial reports claimed it was a fight. The latest reports say it was a non-physical confrontation. Whatever happened, the altercation was bad enough that Sanderson did not travel with the team for its game on Sunday with Iowa. Howard's contract at Michigan has a zero tolerance policy as it relates to his behavior. There's a reason why. Let me walk you through a bit of Jawan Howard's history. And I, I may not do this in proper order, uh, but I, I want to start with, well, okay, we'll start with February of 2022. Juwan Howard struck a Wisconsin assistant coach after arguing with the Badgers head coach in the handshake line. Howard's punch ignited a brief brawl between his players and Wisconsin players. Let's watch the video. 77 to 63. And Juwan Howard not going over immediately to shake hands. Now he's going to get in the line. Interesting finish here. 77. Oh, see, and they're going at it. Oh, yeah. Howard and guard are not happy right now. 
as the two of them continue to have words. We told you Jawan Howard was not happy about that timeout. Yo! And Jawan Howard just threw a right hand. And now we got a scrum. We have a scrum in Madison. Players are pushing and shoving. This is an ugly scene. This is an ugly scene. Oh my God. Trying to get separated, and there's no doubt it all stems from the timeout by Greg Gard. Now, that's not an excuse for this, no. but that is what angered Jawan Howard, and it spilled over into this. And you saw Howard and Greg Gard nose to nose. I knew, I knew he was... I wouldn't be happy either, but there's no excuse for this. Absolutely not. Zero excuse. Zero. This cannot happen. All right. I, I want to play you another clip. And, and this is a guy, this is SOT number five. This is a guy breaking down what triggered Jawan Howard and how th this timeout at the end of the game and how this triggered Jawan Howard. Let's play SOT number five. The requests wouldn't stop pouring in, so here we go. Wisconsin, Michigan. Wisconsin's up 15, trying to bring the ball up. Michigan, full court press, attacking the ball, attacking the ball. Turnover. How about that? Still Wisconsin's ball, though. This is where it all starts because Wisconsin, before putting this ball back in play, calls timeout. There's 15 seconds left. Juwan Howard's like, dude, you're really going to prolong this game and rub it in that you're winning? Wisconsin coach, here's his explanation for why he did it. I called the timeout to, to reset the 10 second call because uh, we only had four seconds to get the ball over half court and I didn't want to put my backups. I had all my bench guys in the game. I didn't want to put them in that position of scrambling with only four seconds. So I took a timeout and it got us a new 10 seconds um, and helped them you know, get organized to get the ball in. And uh, he did not like that when he came through the, the handshake. All right. So that's what happened. That triggered Jawan Howard. That's what ignited Jawan Howard eventually throwing a punch at an assistant coach. And, and so now I want to play you because this is what was incredible. And I talked about this at the time. This is Jawan Howard. This is SOT number three explaining his explanation of why he eventually threw a punch and why he was mad at Greg Gard and the Wisconsin team. Listen to this explanation. Were you upset that the game got extended? Oh, yes, I was. You know, I, I, uh, I didn't like the timeout being called, and I'll be totally honest, but I thought it was you know, not necessary at that moment, uh, especially being a large lead. Um, and then for have the timeout uh, be called for three seconds or four seconds to go, um, you know, I thought that that was you know, what I felt wasn't fair to our guys. So that's what's going on. Just a follow up. If you wanted the game to get done, why keep the press on against Wisconsin's backups at that point? Oh, we was, it wasn't press. It was just five pressure defense, man to man. That's what five is for us. We're here on the left. Juwan, um, you're straight in front of you. What uh, happens between being upset about a timeout being called and raising it to a point where it looked like? you hit another coach in the face. What kind of happens in between to make that happen? Well, basically, uh, you know, I addressed with uh, the head coach that uh, I will remember that <laughs> because of that timeout. And uh, for someone to touch me, and I think that was very uncalled for for him to touch me as we were verbalizing and communicating with one another. So uh, that's what ended up happening. That's what escalated. Okay. Yeah, I guess if you could I guess expand on that a little more. What, what no, I would not expand on it. I just well, share with you the story. What happened? Well, as far as touching, I mean, obviously, it's obvious touching with the handshake line. There, it must have been more than that. Oh, it was more than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Touching, touching me unnecessary was it wasn't caused for that when we were talking. And at that, at that point, you know, I thought that was you know time to protect myself. Was there anything earlier in the game besides the timeout I could see you? Oh no. Uh, so that's Jawan Howard's explanation. And, and 
at, at, at one point, he went on to say, I believe, no, no, I think that's in another clip. No, 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 this is, that's in his 2021 expiration. So j just let me elaborate here. As I did in 2022 when this happened, first, first of all, uh, Juwan Howard is totally discombobulated. It wasn't pressure, it wasn't press. That's what we call five pressure. He, he has no idea what he's talking about, what he's doing. They were doing a press against Wisconsin scrubs. And he's shocked that the man would call a timeout instead of allowing Wisconsin scrubs to get the ball up court and enjoy their 15 seconds on the court. LeBron, I mean, LeBron, <laughs> Juwan Howard is using a full court press, trying to extend the game himself, then gets triggered and snaps on Greg Gard and then throws a punch at an assistant coach. And he's saying he's protecting himself because someone touched him. And so what I said at the time, uh, Juwan Howard does this full press conference. He's thrown a punch that ignites a melee where his coaches and, Wisconsin, and was, uh, where his players and Wisconsin players are throwing punches back and forth at each other. And Juwan Howard at no point apologizes acknowledges that he's wrong, acknowledges that he sparked this. He doesn't walk it back. He sits there with an arrogance of, I did nothing wrong, someone touched me, I threw a punch, and I sparked a melee, an ugly incident. I did nothing wrong. And I said at the time, it's, it's, it's not the punch that should get Jawan Howard fired. It was the post-game press conference where he has no clue he's done anything wrong. That's the leader of your team. This is in 2022. Jawan Howard at this time is 49 years old. He throws a punch in the face of an assistant coach at Wisconsin. He has no idea he's done anything wrong goes through a press conference, smugly, arrogantly questioning anybody that questions anything about him. This guy's in over his head. He's so consumed with anger, he's not even aware of what he's doing. He's not a leader. I pointed this out in real time in 2022. The Big Ten ended up suspending Howard uh, for five games the rest of the regular season, and then they let him come back and coach uh, in the postseason tournament. That was all the punishment he got for an incident that what should have gotten him fired. Not the incident, the fact that he's so clueless to the fact that he ignited the incident, that it was a horrible look for him, that he had something to apologize. It took him several days to reach that conclusion. That's not a leader, that's not a head coach. But no one at Michigan should be surprised because let's go back, let's rewind the clock to 2021, in March of 2021. Howard sparked an ugly confrontation between himself and Maryland's head coach at the time, Mark Turgeon. It took four or five people connected to the Michigan basketball team to restrain Jawan in this incident. This is March of 2021. Play the clip. Well, we had big time fireworks while you were away. Technical on Mark Turgeon, a double technical on Juwan Howard, who has been ejected from this game. And he was incredibly animated. But Turgeon remains, he just had one technical. But here is what happened. See Juwan Howard starting to yell out something at the other side. And then there was some jawing back and forth between he and Mark Turgeon. Look at this. I mean, it, it got really testy, Sean. It, it did, and the officials did a good job of stepping in before what was a bad situation could have gotten progressively worse. And th now, what is always a tough job if you're an official, especially at this level, this became even more so because you're going to have to make sure that what happened as we went to break doesn't seep over. 
You look at the effect of the assistance that had to keep Juwan Howard back. And he was hot. You see Daryl Morcell was in the mix as well. That was Larry Serrato ejecting Juwan Howard. I don't know if you could call it that, but at some point in that, Juwan shoved one of his own players. And, and did you count how many different people it took to restrain Juwan Howard? And, and then to make it worse, let's play sot number one of Juwan explaining what happened between he and Mark Turgeon. Play the clip. Turg saw that I was out of the box. He telling the referee, look at my feet, I'm out of the box. And I'm like, oh, come on, man. This, will, this is what we're doing today. You're worried about my feet being out of the box. And so he said to me, Juwan, I'm not gonna let you talk to me. You don't talk to me ever again. And he charged at me. You know, I don't know how you guys was raised, but you know, how I was raised, you know, by my grandmother and and also by Chicago, because I was raised by Chicago and I grew up in the South Side. When guys charge you, it's time to defend yourself. I went into defense mode and forgetting exactly where I'm at. So here's Juwan Howard. Six foot nine, every bit of, I don't know, 260 pounds, I would guess, 270 pounds in retirement. And, and Mark Turgeon, who's five foot 10 and the coach of Maryland. I've met Mark Turgeon, uh, you know, I, I've met Mark Turgeon. He's not a big, intimidating, imposing guy. He's a little dude, he's five foot 10. Dwan Howard, six foot nine, 260, 270 pounds. Mark Turgeon allegedly charged at Jawan Howard. And so here in 2021, Jawan Howard is 48 years old. He's the leader of the Michigan basketball program. And he's talking about how the streets of Chicago raised him. And I don't know how you all were raised, but when someone charges at you, you're, you're taught to protect yourself. This is the head coach of a major university, a grown man claiming to have been raised by the streets of Chicago. Who believes that as an adult, a fully functioning adult? Who believes that the streets raised you? Now I know a lot of dudes in the penitentiary, or I know enough dudes in the penitentiary or who spent time in the penitentiary who believe the streets raised them. The streets don't raise you. They do. Parents raise, develop, groom. Juwan's grandmother was most involved in his life. The streets neglect you. The streets infect you. The streets lead you on a path to straight destruction. Nobody 48 who's been put in a position of power should believe they were raised by the streets. No one should be talking about, I took my code of ethics and my values and principles from the streets of Chicago, from the streets of Des Moines, Iowa, from the streets of Mayberry, North Carolina. It doesn't matter the streets. It doesn't matter the community, white, black, whatever. If you're an adult running around believing you were raised by some street or some neighborhood or some city, you're an idiot and you're not qualified to be a head coach. Those are the facts. So you have that in March of 2021. Then you come back in 22, and he has these problems with Wisconsin. And again, that's why I was just like, hey, there's a pattern here. This guy is clueless. We listen to his explanation after the incident with Maryland in 21. Then we listen to his explanation in 22. And his explanation, it makes no sense. He has no idea what he's doing. This is a man who believes he was raised by some streets and he needs to instill that in some more young people, those values. And that that's the response. There's a problem here. In December of 22, just a small incident, 
Here's Jawan getting into it with a referee. Now again, white referee here, Jawan Howard getting into it. His players are having to restrain him and pull him back. Mark Turgeon, little white dude, he gets into it with. Greg Gard, head coach of Wisconsin, little white dude, he gets into it with. The, the coach, the assistant coach that he struck at Wisconsin, white dude. This season, Jawan Howard has yet to coach a game for the Michigan Wolverines. He's recovering from heart surgery in September. Despite only acting as an observer so far this season, Jawan Howard has managed to get tossed from a game. Can you believe that? With his team playing poorly against Texas Tech, Howard argued with referees as his team exited the court at halftime. He received two technical fouls and was ejected. And so, and then Howard's incident with John Sanderson, white guy, reportedly revolves around a dispute about the rehabilitation of Howard's son, a member of the Michigan basketball team. Juwan Howard, <clears throat> if he were a former football player at any level, if he played football at Pee Wee level, let alone the NFL level. Everybody in the media would claim he's suffering from CTE. Every, it would, everybody would be like, hey man, we gotta get this guy out of here. He's got CTE, he's crazy. He, he, he has no control over his faculties. But since he's a basketball player, no one says anything. Everyone, eh, this is normal, or this isn't a big deal, or they make excuses, or it's racism, or whatever. Dewan Howard isn't suffering from CTE. He never played football, he didn't play soccer. He's suffering from BLM. Since the death of George Floyd, Jawan Howard has decorated the Michigan warmups with BLM slogans. Say their names and all this other garbage. He's been one of the most outspoken proponents of Black Lives Matter. He's not alone. The BLM disease is rampant among black people. It's a mindset that says all black problems are rooted in the existence of white people and white authority. When Jawan Howard loses a game, he's been programmed to believe white people cost him the points he needed to win. It's white derangement syndrome. Academia, corporate media, and the high profile race hustlers academia and corporate media promote have brainwashed black people into believing white people are God and control the destiny of black people. As a black person, if you do not believe white people control your destiny, academia, high profile race hustlers, corporate and social media will smear you as a sellout. Your family and friends will join in the smear. White derangement syndrome is a mass psychosis crippling black men. I've watched it with my own eyes destroy Jawan Howard. 30 years ago, Jawan Howard was one of the best young people in all of sports. In high school, he was part of the National Honor Society. He was homecoming queen, king. He was president of his high school senior boys council. He was mature, steady presence on the highest profile college basketball team of all time. He declared for the NBA draft after three years in college, but circled back to complete his degree in communications alongside his classmates. For two decades, NBA teams sought his leadership and intangibles. He was groomed in Pat Riley's system. What happened? Dwan Howard lived the American dream. He worked hard and used his God-given talents to elevate his station in life. From the age of 12, the basketball world wooed Howard and provided him financial, educational, and emotional support. Why is Dwan Howard so angry? White derangement syndrome. It requires black people to ingest and spew racial animus. That animus drives you insane and takes a toll on your physical health. Howard is an elite athlete who needed heart surgery at 50. Anger is unhealthy. So is a constant feeling of dependence. Since the rise of social media, black people have been programmed to view the world through the lens of race. It's called being woke. Our ancestors were, for lack of a better description, asleep. Or were they? This generation is locked in a self-destructive trance. We have abandoned our ancestors' values for the values of the secular. Our ancestors fought 
for a society that evaluated life and people based on a set of agreed upon biblical principles and values. Their fight led to freedom and progress. White derangement syndrome leads to insanity and lost opportunities. Juwan Howard is an unreliable and volatile leader because he doesn't even believe he's in control of his own destiny. He thinks he's a victim. Victims make terrible coaches. Michigan is looking for an excuse to fire Howard that will allow the school to avoid being called racist. It's the same exit strategy Michigan State deployed to get rid of its football coach, Mel Tucker. So, Juwan Howard's anger problem, they symbolize the insanity of Black Lives Matter. That is my fire starter. I'm going to add on to it because I, I want to be crystal clear. The reason why I'm leaning into this is because it's not just Jawan Howard. It, it, it's, it's virtually all of us. Th this whole BLM psychosis that we've bought into, this mentality is crippling us. Crippling us. You think it's empowering you at the workplace. Yeah, I got white people over a barrel. They feel so guilty. Uh, they're afraid to fire me. Uh, they're going to promote me to, to prove that they're not racist. And, 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 and let's say it works. Let's say that's why Michigan hired Juwan Howard. And, and so he's had four or five years to be the head coach. He's now going to leave in disgrace. He's destroyed himself. He's blown the opportunity that was given to him. He had a chance with all the support that Michigan was going to surround him with and all the efforts they were going to do to try to make their alum a success. He's blown it all. He's put a clown suit on himself and the University of Michigan. His reputation is destroyed and in tatters. In, in, in tatters. All because, and I'm telling you, I watched this guy. This is not the same guy that I met in 1992. It's not the same guy that I watched go through an NBA career. He was not this angry. He was not this volatile. He was not this triggered by white people. He is now. If we don't come up out of this mass psychosis that's been built around us, through Black Lives Matter, and to seeing ourselves as victims, and to seeing everything that goes against us as, as, as this incredible sign that, oh, white people are pulling strings, and that's why I lost this game, and that's why something bad happened to me, and that's why I don't have the SAT score, and that's why I didn't get into this college, and that's why I didn't get this promotion. When you, particularly as a man, when you don't see yourself as the ultimate solution, when you don't see yourself as the controller of your destiny, in partnership, you need to be working in partnership with God. Knowing, hey, if I partner with God and do the proper steps, I'm going to be a success. If that's not your mentality, if you think others are in control of your destiny, you've basically cut your own balls off. You've emasculated yourself. You've signed up for a level of insanity that looks exactly like Jawan Howard. Any adversity and you snap and you start striking out and you're controlled by your emotions. You have zero emotional control because you don't hold yourself to any standard because you're not responsible for your own destiny. Again, when you surrender all that and see how white people are in control of everything, you're, that means you're in control of nothing, not even yourself. And that's what we see repeatedly from Jawan Howard. He's not even in control of himself. He's given that up. He surrendered that to whoever his white gods are. And you can call me a sellout, but... The BLM crowd, they're the actual sellouts. I actually believe in myself. 
I actually don't think white people are my God are, are, and are in control of me. I don't think that, that black people are inferior and in need of lower standards in order to achieve. I, I, I try to be an example that like things here in America were pretty simple. And again, they, they've made it this big complicated mess. But as you listen to me tell the truth about myself, and I'm telling you, I don't exaggerate. I'm not exaggerating. I'm just telling the truth about myself. You don't need a 1400 on the SAT to have success here in America. You need to show up on time and be accountable and responsible. That's pretty much it. Work hard. That's pretty much it. Show up on time. Present yourself in a way that says you have a level of professionalism and, and responsibility about yourself. And you can achieve great things. I had a 900 SAT score. I graduated Ball State with a 2.23 GPA. I, I, my dad didn't graduate high school. My mother was a factory worker. There was no, I, I had a tiny bit of athletic privilege for a time. It got me, and thank God. And I'm not, I don't want to diminish it because not everybody can get a Division I football scholarship. But I had enough football talent to get a Division I football scholarship. But I didn't have much else. And I look around at my group of friends, and some of them had higher SAT scores than I did for sure. But not all of them. And some of them, you know, Parents were married. Some of them, their parents weren't. But I look around at my group of friends and all of all they did was show up and be responsible. And they made some mistakes, but they corrected those mistakes. And I'm talking, I got a large group of about 10, 12 guys that I either went to high school or college with that I remain in contact with. And they're all successful. And, and none of them well, Todd Fennell, don't be upset with you. We call Todd's family the Huxtable family. But everybody else, you know, Todd's parents were both college graduates and, and fraternities and sororities or whatever. His dad was an educator. And, but, Todd, I love you. And, <laughs> but everybody else came from a little less idyllic background than Todd. Some of them, Caswell Dawson, whew, I'm, I don't want to put Kaz's business out there, but, you know, Kaz is from the hood in a real, real way. Successful. Just because he, he had a, some character and a work ethic and was willing to show up on time. That, that's all this world really requires. Anybody that's telling you something different is lying to you and wants you to see yourself as a victim and wants to hand you an excuse. Frank Barnes, I do got to admit, Frank, <laughs> first time I visited my boy Frank, we were in college, I visited his parents' house, I was like, because Frank always used love claim, he's from Chicago or whatever, but that was one of the nicest houses I'd ever been in when I went to go visit, <laughs> anyway, but I, I, I'm just, and, and I'm going to bring LeBron James into this as I transition a little bit. But before I do that, uh, I want to talk to you guys about uh, my favorite sponsor. You guys know I love Preborn. As the left ramps up their efforts to abort babies, it's time to ramp up our efforts to save babies. Why not include saving a baby's life on your Christmas list? And because of our partnership with Preborn, an organization that has rescued over 270,000 babies, you can do just that. Every day, Preborn's network of clinics rescues 200 babies and they compete head to head with the abortion giants. You see, they offer an abortion minded woman a free ultrasound. Once she meets her baby for the first time and hears that heartbeat, her baby's chance at life more than doubles. 
For just $28, you can save a life. And now through a match, your tax deductible gift is doubled too. And because Preborn supports both mothers and babies with diapers, car seats, counseling, and more for up to two years, you are offering double blessings. Now is the time to put your year-end write-off write-offs to work. Just dial pound 250, say the keyword baby. That's pound 250, keyword baby. Or go to preborn.com slash fearless. That's preborn.com slash fearless. So <clears throat> I want to bring in Deion Sanders into this conversation. Uh, I'm not Deion Sanders. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. I want to bring LeBron James into this conversation. And I, I, because this victim mentality and, and how it just baffles me that LeBron James could be blessed in the womb and, and given these God-given gifts that are incredible. And born into difficult circumstances, a single mother doesn't know or have a relationship with his father, born into poverty. But because he's born here in America and because he was blessed with these physical gifts, you know, by the age of 10, 11, 12, LeBron James is identified as this great athletic gift and people start helping LeBron James reach his full athletic potential and uh, live out the American dream. By the time he gets to high school, everybody in the world's chasing LeBron James. They got him in a private Catholic high school. He's driving a Hummer. He, he's just being treated like he, by the time he's 18, reaches the NBA, he's worth millions of dollars. He employs his friends, gives them an opportunity to elevate themselves from Maverick Carter to Rich Paul to any of the group of guys that he's all lifted up alongside of him. But because of this racial victimization mentality that is pervasive in our culture, LeBron James walks around and pretends to be angry and mad at the world and pretends like he's a victim and put on the little press conference a few years ago about, oh, they spray painted the N-word on my $20 million mansion that I wasn't even at. And, and so I want to play a video. Now, here's his son, Bronny James Jr., who suffers a cardiac arrest that jeopardizes his college basketball career. And so here's LeBron walking in. Uh, Bronny played in his first game this weekend for USC, what, six, seven months after suffering this cardiac arrest. This is a day of great gratitude and thanks. Man, I'm wealthy. I live in one of the greatest countries with some of the best doctors in the world. And my son got the medical support he needed. And he's now back out on the basketball court chasing his dreams. What an incredible day of gratitude and thanks and just an overwhelming feeling of like, whoo, life has been good to me. Here's LeBron James. And, and do we have the audio of this? Because LeBron James walks into USC's game where his son's about to make his first uh, court appearance, uh, on court appearance, and they're playing the national anthem. And... LeBron James has to go on with this cosplay of he has no respect for the national anthem. And so he walks in while they're playing the national anthem and then sits down on the front row while the national anthem is still playing. Let's, I th let's play the clip. In the, the clip. <laughs> I don't get this. I don't remotely understand how LeBron James, on a day, a joyous day, his son's returning to the court to play. He's recovered from his health issues. The national anthem's playing, and instead of stopping what you're doing, 
and coming to attention and joining the rest of the audience, you have to walk in, make a scene, sit down. You know you're attracting attention. This is screaming out a lack of gratitude and a lack of respect for a country that has been very good to you. This is the white derangement syndrome that I'm talking about. And it has affected all black people, particularly black men. And so, yes, if you have six foot nine and you can jump out of the gym, if you have all that talent, you can get away with LeBron's mentality because he's made a billion dollars playing basketball. And so if you're Juwan Howard, you're six foot nine, all that athletic talent, and you've made $150 million in the NBA. You can get a head coaching job at Michigan or some university, act a complete fool uh, in that capacity, because you've made $150 million. You, you can do what Jawan Howard's doing. You can do what LeBron James is doing. But let's say you're five foot 10. Let's say you weigh 145 pounds or 170 pounds or 230 pounds and you don't have all that athletic ability. Let's say you're like 98% of everybody else in America. Do you know how rare it is to be six foot nine anywhere in the, on the planet? You know how rare that is? I, I'm sure it's less than a half percent of the people on the planet are six foot nine. The chances of being six foot nine, you got probably got a better chance of hitting the lotto than being six foot nine. And then it's even worse. It, six foot nine filled with the athletic talent to make it to the NBA and to make 150 million or a billion dollars. It's even more incredible odds than hitting the lottery. And so the example that Juwan is setting, that LeBron is setting, it works for the super duper small percentage of people that have that kind of athletic talent and that type of size. For the rest of you, you need to play by a different set of rules. And that's why I talk so much about crush your idolatry because these super elite athletes are not setting an example that you should follow. They're playing by a totally different set of rules. They can run around and pretend like they hate America. They can be infected with white derangement syndrome. And because of their athletic ability, they'll get away with it. You do it and you're going to be an enormous failure. You're going to lock yourself out of the job market. You're going to never be able to be a leader and a patriarch in your family because you've adopted the values, the principles, and the rules that apply to a special elite set of people. That's why I talk about these guys constantly because I see people that think, oh, LeBron is my role model. Oh, Deion Sanders is my role model. Oh, Jawan Howard is my role model. No, they're not. That's a special set of elite people who play by a complete different set of rules than everyone else. You want to talk about privilege? Be six foot four, six foot five with a ton of athletic ability. Be a six foot person that can run a four two in the 40. You're playing by a completely different set of rules. They'll lie to you and never tell you this. They'll, oh boy, all the racism I faced and discrimination I faced. No, they didn't. They faced a life of privilege, a life of grown men and other adults catering to them since they were about age 10, 11, or 12. That's what they face. They'll lie to you. They'll never tell you the truth of that. You'll hate me because I am telling you the truth and I am telling you what it is you need to do if you want to make it in this world. The victim mentality 
running around thinking the white man is in control of your life and that I'm woke and I'm smarter than everybody else because I figured out that every problem I have is the white man's responsibility. I'm the sell-off for telling you that's the wrong mentality and won't lead to your success. For giving you good advice. You want to look at yourself and see in the mirror LeBron James or Deion Sanders or Jawan Howard. I got bad news to break to you. Most of you look like me. You're fat and out of shape or, <laughs> you know, you got an inch worth of athletic talent. The world's not going to cater to you. You have to change your approach. You have to adopt the right mentality. That's what I wanted to get off my chest today about Dewan Howard. Going to bring on uh, Ken Maurer, longtime uh, NBA ref. We're going to find out what's going on with him and the NBA over his uh, refusal uh, to take the COVID experimental medical trial that they passed off as a vaccine. Uh, before we do that, I want to talk to you guys about Unitas. The sports and lifestyle apparel industry has been dominated for years by companies with divisive agendas, companies that use your dollars to fund things you probably don't agree with. Unitas is the alternative. It's a new clothing company founded by NBA player Jonathan Isaac that offers a values-based alternative for stylish, high-quality sports and lifestyle apparel. But it's more than cool clothes. Unitas is a community and a movement bringing people together in support of traditional values like faith, family, and freedom. When you shop Unitas, you're supporting a company committed to bolstering these values and upholding them in the marketplace. Jonathan recently launched his first signature shoe under Unitas called the Judah One. The Judah One is making history as the first ever signature shoe to feature a visible Bible verse on the exterior. The collection features five different shoes in five different colorways, all inspiring you to live out your faith with boldness. To shop the Judah One, visit weareunitas.com. That's weareunitus.com. Use the promo code BLAZE1 at checkout for free shipping. All right, don't go anywhere. Tim Maurer, next. Go to heaven with freedom. It's my obligation to hate discrimination. Raising up your hands for freedom. Megan Kelly, previously on Fearless. Occasionally, Bill Maher will mock the left while putting a button on making sure that the right is the real bad guys. But all of these comedians, to me, leave so much meat on the bones, and I think it's a very savvy move by the Daily Wire and Jeremy and, and Ben, just like, no, we're going to take this layup. We'll, we'll, we'll take this easy money. There's a whole audience out there that's dying for this type of content, and we'll give it to them. Yeah, and you know what the truth is? It, most of these people on the center left they feel exactly as you and I do. They're just way too afraid to say it. So they're not just speaking to right-wing conservative Daily Wire subscribers. There will be, just as with Matt Walsh's What is a Woman, there will be a wider audience for this. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's roll out to, I believe, Florida. Or are we rolling out to Minnesota? We'll find out here in a minute. Ken Maurer. Long time, maybe the second longest tenured NBA ref in history. Uh, his career was cut short. Of course, you guys remember Ken's been on the show and talked about uh, his problems with the NBA and over the experimental medical trial that they passed off as a vaccine. We wanted to check back in uh, with Ken uh, to get updated on his battle with the NBA because, one, I think – uh, we need to rally some support around Ken. Uh, this battle's going on a little bit longer, and it's a little more heated than we anticipated. But Ken, uh, update us on what's the latest and and how your fight is going. First of all, hello, Jason. How are you? And you're 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 right. I'm in Minnesota. I um I come up from Florida, and I always spend Minnesota, or I always did when I was working when I was refereeing. I just enjoy the holidays. I enjoy my family, I enjoy the people, I enjoy the, you know, the festivities, the lights, the trees, the weather. But then, you know, come January, I, 
I, I get a little smarter and I head back down to Florida. But, uh, but yeah, it's been going. So you like to be in the snow. You like the snow during the Christmas season. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I don't think I've been down in Florida now over 20 years. I just don't see the Christmas spirit. And the people put up lights, and they're very, you know, they do they work very hard at it and stuff. But it's never going to seem like Christmas to me without snow and Santa Claus and and all the lights and the carols and the music and the the beautiful concerts at the basilicas and stuff like that. It's just it's just never going to seem like that to me. So I, you know, hey, I toughen it up for a month, five weeks, and I, I love every day of it. We have the home decorated. My wife does a wonderful job. But then, no, come January, I, I, I get a little smarter and I go back down to Florida. I enjoy the, the beautiful weather down there. All right. So uh, what's the update on? Well, hold on. You put out a, a video. Maybe we'll just start there. Let's 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 share Ken's video about what's going on with him and his dispute with the NBA and how we can support. Let, let's play the video first, and then we'll get Ken's comments. My name is Kenny Maurer, and I'm proud to say I'm born and raised in Minnesota. My NBA career began in 1986, and as a result, I've worked in five decades and over 2,000 regular season games. The NBA was like a big family to me. We all worked together, players, the coaches, the stadium staff, everyone in the arena. But in 2020, like many Americans, my life was turned upside down when I refused to take the COVID injection. My religious and medical freedoms were denied. And after a 36 year career, I was terminated from the NBA. And to make matters worse, in an unprecedented move, the NBA froze my pension. My story is like too many other American citizens. If you don't comply with the narrative, you need to be silenced. Well, if you know me, I'm not very easy to silence. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing, suing the NBA for firing me and freezing my pension. I don't even recognize the league I used to refer to as family. They have proven this is no longer about basketball. I need your help. The NBA is trying to lawyer me to death and basically silence anyone who dares speak out against them. Please join me in this fight at givesendgo.com slash Kenny Mauer and send a message to the NBA. You will not silence any of us. And when we win this battle, any contribution you give will be paid forward to others in this freedom movement. Thank you. Givesin.go slash Kenny. Don't forget the Y. Oh, once I put Kenny, the, the mower popped up automatically. Maybe I've already been on here. Uh, Kenny, what is uh, the latest uh, with you and your fight with the NBA? Well, first of all, Jason, uh, I'd like to briefly explain why I did this. Um, I, I wasn't going to do it, and for the longest time I didn't. Um, I've already gone through my 401k. You're right, the NBA uh, refuses to release my pension. They cl claim that the, the judge may, put me, may reinstate me, where I don't believe the NBA has any, any intention of reinstating me anyway. So it's, it's kind of like one part of the NBA is saying one thing on one lawsuit, another part of the NBA is saying another thing on the other lawsuit, though I have no doubts that they both know what you, what each other's doing. So I, you know, I mean, lawyers fees, come on, you, you, you understand people that are listening. You understand. I mean, I have wonderful lawyers. Believe me, I do not mind paying my lawyers. They're doing a, a wonderful hell, hell of a job, but, um, you know, attorney's bills sometimes go over a hundred thousand dollars a month. And so, you know, you wonder why people don't do this, why they don't stand up to the big bad wolf. And believe me, I totally understand. So I met a, became friends with a guy by the name of Senator, Jensen, Scott Jensen, a, a wonderful guy, ran, was a senator here in Minnesota, ran for governor against Walls and lost. What a shame. But um, he, he, I lunched with him one day and he said, Kenny, I don't want anything to do with, you know, GoFundMe. They've gone in and taken money out of people's accounts because they didn't believe in the narrative. So I don't believe I, I want nothing to do with that organization. But he said the men, one of the men who started GoFundMe, I don't know if you knew this, Jason, but started Give, Send, Go. He's a Christian man. So this is a Christian based organization that works to try to help people that are Christian based that that and others that are fighting certain fights. So he said, Kenny, he said, you know, I think people want to help. They want to. I've been at functions, Jason, where I was at, I was at a function the other day and I spoke with Senator Johnson here in Minnesota, Senator Jensen here in Minnesota. And a little old lady came up to me. I mean, a little old lady came up to us after the show 
and gave Senator Johnson and I five dollars and said, God bless both of you. Please keep it up. Keep, please keep the fight up for all of us. Now, that hit home with me. I mean, I, I don't get emotional very much, but I went, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. And she just walked away. So Senator Jensen said, Ken, people want to help you. They want to do. And people have helped me. But the problem was, Jason, is that when we initially put it out, I was censored because I used the word freedom or I used the word NBA or I used the word, I don't know, Jason, I don't, I don't know what I said. You listen, you just listen to it. It's a minute, 36 seconds long. You tell me what I said that was wrong. Well, because of that, instead of going out to a, to a, a you know, a, what do you call it, a link that had like 90,000 people, it only hit 10,000. So, you know, I don't know if they've never had it happen to these people who have gone on this before. So I'm kind of working hard to, through people like you and others, to, to just try to get my message out. And the other thing that I, the only reason I did it was, all this would be used for paying expenses and lawyer's fees. And when I win this thing, Jason, whatever I use for my lawyer's fees and expenses, I'm going to pay this back. We're going to give it to Dr. Walscott. We're going to give it to Mass Mandate. We're going to give it to the, to the people in Wisconsin. We're going to give it to people that, that are fighting the fight just like you and I are. And, and I swear that I would do that. And people will see on my account just where I forward the money to after I use it for attorney's fees. So that's why I did it. That's the problem I'm having. Um, I'm not quitting. I'm not stopping. I'm going to move forward. You know, you borrow money. You you work with other people. Many people have come forward. This has helped. Um, and uh, but again, the NBA slow plays everything. You know, certain depositions. We're in the deposition stage now. I can't talk about the trial as, as case, as you know. But uh, they were in the and, and and you know they walked away from certain depositions. So have we. We've canceled certain depositions. But it's just all about moving it forward and playing it and making it last, so that my attorney's bills go crazy, 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 and that um, I don't have the money to fight it. Well. I'm not. I'm going to have the money to fight it. I'm. I'm, I'm going to find a way. And um, there always seems to be something. Um, something happens. Uh, I. You know, the Lord finds a way. I. I, I become more biblical and more more um, godly than ever before because um, I. I just realize how important this is. And um, I'm not going to stop, Jason. So I appreciate people like you and other people that have come forward and tried to help me. But that's the money is going to be used to fight this. And when I win, I'm going to. I'm not going to keep the money. I'm giving it forward, and I'm proud to say that. So when Senator Jensen found that out and the guys from Give, Send, Go, they said, wow, Kenny, geez, let, let's go. And that's what I'm doing. And um, But it's, uh, you know, hey, we're in the depositions. Then we're going to do expert witnesses. Uh, we hope to have a trial date sometime, you know, in, in the spring. So, I mean, it's moving forward after two and a half years. I've had discussions with you, and not a doggone thing was going on. And now it's actually moving forward. We, you know, we're deposing generals. We're deposing higher, the highest people up in the NBA we're deposing the assistant commissioner, the commissioner. I mean, again, I can't talk about the trial, the case, but, but um, you know, I, I you know, I'm anxious to see just what they're going to say about why they did this and why there's no mandate in our seven in the new collective bargaining agreement for the referees. There's absolutely no mandate to take the vaccine, but yet I still have to take it to come back to work. If somebody wants to explain that to me, I'm all ears, Jason. I'm all ears. Kenny, you spent 36 years in the league. Uh, you're friends with, or you were friends with a lot of NBA players. Have any of them reached out in support, not, not just in support, just emotionally, not financially, but have any of the NBA players you've known for so many years reached out and shown you any support? You know, Jason, not many of the current NBA referees. There's a few, but I think they're scared to reach out because you know, I'm the bad guy now and I'm bucking the system. And, you know, but I've heard from Isaiah Thomas. I've heard from Phil Jackson. I've heard from Charles Barkley. I've heard John Stockton. And I, as you well know, have become very good friends. He's a wonderful guy. And so, you know, Ken Rutgers and and and, and, and others, um, people that, you know, they maybe maybe you can say they don't have anything to lose because this is all about money. You know, why is the NBA doing what they're doing? Why don't more, you know, elite athletes stand up and, you know, they, they know people that have, have suffered. They know people that have, have you know, uh, you know, have gotten myocarditis. They know people that have, have gotten blood clots. They know. So why don't they? And and I don't know. And I, I um, you know, I've tried to reach out to Kyrie Irving. I've tried to find him. I, I, I respect what he did. Again, you and I have talked many times. It's, it's not, I have a Christian faith. I believe, <clears throat> I don't believe in abortion. I'm pro-life. I don't believe that, that anything we put in our body, any 
vaccine, any food, anything should have the, the, the aborted fetal cells used in its development, manufacturing, and or you know, making of the vaccine testing. So that's what I believe, and I'm never going to change, and they're not going to change me. But I mean, I, I, I believe everybody should have the right to do whatever they want to do. If somebody wants to take the vaccine, they should be allowed to do that. If they want to take, go in to see something medically and, and, and a specific medical, go ahead, do that. But, you know, I'm not going to, I'm never going to stand for taking away our re religious and medical beliefs, our freedoms, our civil liberties. I'm not going to do that. And, um, you know, they, they argue one time saying that, uh, that a civil liberty, what do you mean by civil liberty? I said, well, your Christian beliefs and your medical beliefs, they're part of our civil liberties. And they argued about that. They look for anything they can to try to find fault with me. I'm a bad guy now, you know, and so, um, but I don't care. We've all fought that, haven't we? And um, I, uh, I'm meeting some wonderful people. Boy, I'm meeting wonderful people. They're coming up to me or I get emails and I get texts and I speak. One day I spoke in front of 10,000 people in Alexandria and seeing these people, they just, they really, it, it's, it's, they really want people to, to educate them, to help them, to, to um, help them not have to give up their freedoms. And a lot of them can't fight it because they don't have, you know, the wherewithal. I'm just fortunate that I have dear friends that are helping me. So, Kenny, <clears throat> as I've stated earlier in the show, you didn't hear this, but there's nothing I ask my audience to do that I don't do myself. And so uh, I've already hit your give, send, go. Uh, I want to encourage my audience to support Kenny. You'll be able to see my name and my gift on there that I try to back up uh, what I say I'm going to do. And so I, I would love for the people in my audience, we're in the Christmas holiday season and, and you know, whatever the donation, whether it's a dollar, whether it's a thousand dollars, whether it's a million dollars, it's all going to a great cause and someone that's been a friend to this show. Uh, you guys have seen Kenny on the show. I think this is now his third or fourth time on the show. He helped me get John Stockton and uh, RFK Jr. and a bunch of people on the show for that cookout edition. Uh, Kenny's been nothing but a friend and supporter of this show. And so I would like for us as fearless soldiers uh, to support Kenny in this time of need, not asking you to do anything that I'm not willing to do. You'll go see it. I just gave Kenny $500. I want you all to give whatever it is you're capable of giving. Uh, Kenny, uh, we will stay in touch. We'll be praying for you throughout the holiday season and as you move forward in your fight uh, with the NBA. Uh, you're on the right side of this deal, and I'm glad that we can show you some support. I love you, Jason. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, that's Kenny Maurer. Uh, we're not going to play tomorrow, today at the end of the show, uh, because... I want to play Shamika, and I want to play uh, Coach Pee Wee. I want, <laughs> I want to end the show with a little smile on my face. Uh, so uh, let's cue up some uh, Shamika Michelle and uh, her riff on Pee Wee and give me a little dose of Dion. And that way, if you're Ticket TV or one of these Dion groupies, the show's over. You can leave now before shedding a tear. You can just walk off. The rest of you that want a little smile on your face, Here's Shamika Michelle and her great new rap song. Coach D, rub these players up. If you see me, then you know it's about a bug. Not about my players, I don't give up. I'm the big dog, should do my little pup. Diamonds on his wrist, and he hold it up. When I holler pee wee, that mean I suck. Manipulate my players, then I get them stuck. Take the corner back for a Colorado bus. Do you believe in that? Nope. We ran out of love. I'm 56, sacking like I'm 30. Worship me like an idol, cause I'm worthy. Drop rose for a snow hose, wasn't pretty. Overplaying Travis Hunter, did him dirty. Should do a crying daddy, why they hurt me? Setting sack record sight, getting blurry. Players decommitting, coaches start to scurry. Run into the transfer portal in a hurry. Your favorite black coach, I do no wrong. Get them wins up, oh, I won't be here for long. Call them ghetto rappers to get us in a zone. Who ready? 
I'm ready, now play my theme song If you see me then you know it's about a bug Not about my players, I don't give up I'm the big dog, should do my little pup Diamonds on his rich, Sandy, hold it up When I holler pee we that mean I suck And if you let my players, then I get them stuck Take the corner back for Colorado Buffs Do you believe that? Nope. We ran out of love Call me Coach Prime, yeah, I'm the chosen one Double threat in my time, touchdown, home run The PVD high fans are really dumb Getting all this recognition, and it is really fun What would make you think I care about what you think of me? I got teams running scared, Coach We Started from the bottom, and then we won three I did this without them, cause it's about me Your favorite black coach, I do no wrong Get them wins up, or I won't be here for long Call them ghetto rappers to get us in a zone Who ready? I'm ready, now play my theme song If you see me then you know it's about a bug Not about my players, I don't give up I'm the big dog, should build my little pup Diamonds on his wrist, Sandy, hold it up When I holler pee wee, that mean I suck Manipulate my players, then I get them stuck Take the corner back for a Colorado buck Do you believe that? We ran out of luck